Hey everyone, this is Matt, and welcome to Hedron Alignment's first deck tech. So this is going to be Modern Elves. It's a deck of my choice at FNMs, and with its recent win by Liam Lonergan at SCG Invitational, the deck is increasing in popularity, so let's jump right into things. First off, this is a splash white build. You won't see any cards in the main deck that are white, but the sideboard is filled with answers to almost all the decks in the format. All the prices I'll be showing in this are from TCG Player, and the link to the deck will be on will be in the description on Tapped Out. Alright, so starting with lands, we're running six forests, because, well, basics are nice. You can fetch up with them with our next land. We're running four of Windswept Teeth, so this is good to fix our colors, post-board games, and it lets us sit on our deck throughout the entirety of every game. So we're also running four Razor Verge Thicket, because we only need around two lands to operate, so these guys are actually a lot better than you might think. So next, we're running four One of Lands. We're running one Horizon Canopy one Temple Garden, and one Nykthos, and one Pentelaven. So Horizon Canopy gives us a card draw late game. It's really expensive though, so if you don't have them, I only have one, that's why there's only one in this deck, feel free to just replace it with Forest. So Temple Garden is good with our Windswept Teeth, lets us fix our colors post board games. Nykthos is a great way to get mana, so add Devotion to Green. With our board state with this deck, it's going to be insane. You'll be getting like 10 15 mana every single time. Pendlehaven is good when you have to play a beatdown plan. And a land that you won't be seeing right here is Cavern of Souls. Really expensive. I wish I had them. They're great if you have a control meta. And we'll be moving on to our next, our next 8 spells in the deck. So, this is a way that we get our elves into play without just hard casting them. So, we have Collected Company. So, we're running four Collected Company and four Court of Calling. Collected Company just lets us go off. It's just crazy because we can hit some crazy Collected Companies and just start to spiral out of control. And Court of Calling lets us get any answer we need. So, this is a toolbox build and we can just court up for any creature we need. But what would an elf deck be without a playset of Flannel Elves and Elfish Mystics? So these guys are usually our ideal one turn one play, and they won't break the bank at all. So just look at that Flannel Elves art. I love it. Next we have a playset of Heritage Druid and Nettle Sentinel. So Heritage Druid is by far my favorite card in the deck. It leads to some really crazy plays. Gives us the speed we need in the early turns, and was recently reprinted in Eternal Masters, so that cut the price nearly in half. Um, Nettle Sentinel never ceases to impress me either, so this guy can let you have some good pressure early with having a 2-2 two -two for 1. It also combos really well with Heritage Druid, and can let you dump your entire hand as early as turn 2. Crazy is all I can say. So moving on to our 2 drops, we have 4 Dwines Elite and 3 Elf Visionaries. So both these cards give us card advantage pretty much, so we either get two elves out of one card, is in the case with Dwine's Elite, and get a card draw out of the Elvish Visionary, which is both really good value. So they also let us combo off a little bit with our Heritage Druids, and even if we don't have a Heritage Druid, the cards are still great. So before we move on to the three drops, we're not running Shaman the Pack. Um, I opted out for the Splash Black again to be a more toolbox style deck, so we're running sor four silver bullets, so we have Scavenging Use, which is great against board wipes if we play it after the kill of our elves. It's a little bit of graveyard height in some matchups. We're running Eternal Witness, so well it's not really good against anything, but it's just really good value, so you're allowed so you can bounce back any of your elves that might die for some reason. You can bounce back collect company, which is an insane play when you get if you're able to do that. And it's still worth having a spot in the deck, even though it's not an elf. So we have Reclamation Sage, which is great against Pithy Needle, Ghostly Prison, or just any artifact or enchantment that we can't deal with. And lastly we have Spellskite, so it's a great catch all versus in fact control builds. There's just so many places where this guy can just be amazing, even against like Bogles. It's worth a place in the main deck easily. So now we're on to our three drops. So we have four Elvish Archdruid and two Azuri. So our four Elvish Archdruids 
is a lord, and it gives us a ton of mana. And I don't know what else I want to ask for an elf. It's just probably the best elf in the deck, in my opinion. And it just gives us the mana that we need to win with our win conditions. So one of our win conditions being Azuri. He's really great. So he gives us the regeneration in case they try to kill one of our elves. It's just overrun for five mana. We can activate it as many times as we want. Let's just, just pummel through an entire board and make our elves huge. But we're only playing two of him because of the legend rule. And he can be shut down against Pithy Needle. So that's why we're running our next card here. We're running a one of Crater Hook Behemoth. So it's, it's usually played as a one of in Legacy Elves as well. So it's definitely worth the one spot in our deck. Um, he gives us alternate win condition if they shut off Azuri with Pithy Needle or Phyrexian Roker or anything like that. And sometimes you're in these weird situations. I know I've been in them before with this deck where you can't win an Azuri. You can't win, and you're swinging like three guys, and it's like really weird. And you're like, if I get Crater Pope Behemoth, I can actually win here. So he can let you win if you have enough mana. He's usually, if you have enough mana to cord for this guy, it's usually better to do that than getting an Azuri and activating him most of the time. So since we're playing a toolbox deck, our sideboard is really flexible. So here are just some things that I run. It just really depends on your meta. And remember, you can always splash black if you want. If you want to get out of the toolbox build, you can run Shaman in the pack. And then you get um, Abrupt Decay sideboard, which is great. Um, so, with a reasonable sideboard, we're around $500. But I hope you guys check out our last video, which is a gameplay, this deck. And if you guys have anything else to add, just please leave a comment. I hope you can consider a subscription as well. Alright, thanks.